And also, I think Berry Coffee's coffee is incredible now. We love the Bull Run uh, blend. I go down to Kowalski's and buy it myself off the off the shelf. Uh, you know, you can order it through the company. So, you know, they have equipment. They can work with you if you're a restaurant, a bar, or a business. They can set up your employees to have good, healthy, you know, snacks and, and drinks, or unhealthy if you want. Uh, they're a green company, great customer service, but Roy knows them even better than I do. I've got a great Steve Brem story. I was just with Steve uh, yesterday uh, uh, at our Pitch In for Baseball equipment distribution event that we did with the Twins in the Champions Club at Target Field, which was Oh, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, that's sorry, I'm sorry I was out of town. Yeah, I was... Yeah, I, and you were invited, and and uh, that you know being in Florida was your uh, was your only excuse. Yeah. But um, uh, so I'm with Steve, and he said, uh, and this is classic. This is just classic Steve Brem and, and Barry Coffee. He got a call from one of his car dealership um, uh, accounts from the guy that runs the uh, this this car dealer uh, dealership uh, that has Barry Coffee in the uh, in the, uh, the, the store. And he said, you know, you got to give this other dealership. It was kind of a sister dealership. You got, you, you got have to have a salesman call them. They've got another purveyor and they're, um, they're, they're not very satisfied. So Steve said, I'm not sending a salesman down there. He called up the, uh, the head of the dealership, the new dealer, the other dealership. What's the problem? Well, I, I, I called our purveyor and said, uh, I, this is not, this is, I, I can't make this or that work. And their answer was, you just don't know how to work it right. So he said, I, I'm really not very happy with that, with that answer. And Steve said, I'll be right there. And wow. Steve didn't send a, send a salesperson. He drove over there himself. And, uh, of course the result is that the uh, new dealership has uh berry coffee there. I mean, that's just, it, just a, you know, just a quick story about the kind of things that, uh, Steve, and really, the whole you know the whole organization uh, organization does. I, it just made me laugh yesterday because I said, you know, I know that about you. I already I already knew that was going to happen. Absolutely. Hey, uh, so I get down here. The first game I saw was I was lucky. Uh, drove up to Bradenton and watched Martin Perez and uh, Fernando Romero pitch in the same game, and it was pretty spectacular. And I'm someone who knows not to get blown away by spring training performances or project too much, but man, Martin Perez. He was filthy. Romero was filthy, both throwing with velocity, but also uh, with running fastballs. The ball's moving. And uh, I know in, you know, Romero, we already knew he had really good stuff. Perez, you know, he's he's not always been a guy who could throw with velocity. And again, we don't, we're not saying this is, it's just everything's gumdrops and lollipops and everything's going to be great. But, you know, they said that Wes Johnson, their new pitching coach, came in and said, hey, Martin, if you just use your hips more, you're going to have more better, better control and better velocity and better movement. Do this, this, and this, and all of a sudden it's working. Now he's given up a home run today as we're talking, so it's you know he's not going to he, he will give up runs this year, but I think he has dramatically increased his upside over what we might have expected to see from Martin Perez. So I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong. I'm I'm hearing that he, he's. Uh, it looks like he's going to be capable of throwing 94 uh, now, maybe possibly 95 in instead of then trying to you know throw 91 with sink. And I got to tell you two things about about Martin uh, Martin Perez in that context. First of all, 95 is better than 91 with sink. I, it just is. I don't care what anybody says. You can't. You can't throw enough quality sinkers at 91 miles miles an hour to consistently get big league hitters out anymore. And with the way uh, big league hitters are trying to lift and separate now with their swings, you know, sinkers that uh, stay in the in the strike zone uh, or sinkers that don't sink. Uh, the next time you see them, some fans got it a long ways away, uh, you know, from home plate. And uh, 95 tends to tends to even that out a little bit because you're you're all around you're more places in the strike zone effective than just the three places that you can be effective in the strike zone with a sinker which is knee high in knee high middle knee high down and and so i i love the fact sure he's good i mean he's he's not uh max scherzer but but he's uh, left-handed, and he's got uh, he's been a big league pitcher, and I, I think the Twins are really really going to help him. Um, 
and the you know the second thing uh, about uh, about that is that uh he he's going to go out there as a left-hander he's going to go out there a lot and uh give them a chance to a chance to win and that's a you know that's a positive they just you can't put a lot of faith in spring training but on the other hand having a good spring is way better than having a bad spring <laughs> even if you're not going to put stock in either one of them it's it's just better so the fact that he's throwing the ball well is um, is a big plus. And I saw him throw him 95, 97, sitting a lot at 96. And again, with some well, that's fantastic. A little bit movement too. So that's it was pretty yeah, dynamic. That's, you know, guys can get. You know, I understood that uh, that you know they wanted him to throw sinkers in in Texas, and and guys can get really messed up uh, that way. And that's where the hips come in. You know, when you when when you start thinking that you're a sinker ball pitcher then everything uh, slows down in a bad way a little bit. You get a little too fine. You're worried about your release point, your hand coming up o- over the ball so the ball sinks. And you're worried about a lot more things than what the very most basic thing about pitching or anything else act, uh, in, in athletics is. And that's your legs and your, and your core and how they're allowing you to drive to a point where your arm gets in the right spot and you get the maximum uh, effect and and sinker ball pitchers can get leg lazy. I think um, you know the you think about the great singer, you look, think about Scott Erickson's uh, delivery and think about what a horse he was in his lower body and how he drove off the rubber and, and I mean his ball his ball sunk more than anybody I've ever seen with with velocity but that that was a lot to do with his with his legs and his hip action and all that all that stuff so good for Wes Johnson. And good for them recognizing what kind of arm that Perez has and said, look, you know, here's the deal. He may not be the world's greatest left-hander at throwing 96, but it's going to be better than 91 trying to sink the ball. I guarantee it. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, we have a deal with Bite Squad. Use the promo code TALKNORTH to get your first delivery at Bite Squad free. But even if you use them many times, and I know a lot of our listeners have, uh, keep going back. They have a new deal, membership program Get unlimited deliveries from restaurants within a four-mile radius for just five ninety-nine a month, and you can use this for family meals, lunch if you can't get away from the office, breakfast in bed, date night when your kids are asleep. You don't have to deal with parking, traffic, weather, black ice. Uh, so download the Bite Squad app or order on BiteSquad.com and use the promo code TalkNorth if you haven't used it before. Uh, Talk North is brought to you by Bite Squad. Good food for your mood. Don't settle for frozen pizza. Uh, so the new baseball proposals are out for new rule changes for 1999. Uh, nine, I'm sorry, two, boy, 1999. I'm so old. Uh, 2019 and 2020, and uh, you know, some fa- some of them are fascinating, uh, including the one that a pitcher will be required to face a minimum of three batters in a game beginning 2020. Uh, your thoughts on the rules? Well, that's the most interesting one that will um speed the game up uh immensely i i believe i um i also i i'm not sure that i like that as well as just as trying to get to the same thing with uh with uh roster limitations right and and i think you've said that in the past i i i believe I, i'm not i'm not sure but but if you have fewer pitchers on your staff uh i think it's a better game because fewer pitchers are going to be in every ball game, and the result will be that you, you know pitchers are going to be pitching to three hitters more often, relief pitchers. But also, the more the more position players you have, the the more fun that is too, because there'll be uh, there'll be more offense, there'll, there'll be a, uh, you know more managerial moves in the American League for all the National League people that think that the, one of the most exciting things in, in, in baseball is to go out and watch a manager make a double switch for God's sake. But um, in any event, trying to get at fewer trips to the mound and bringing in relievers, I think is a, I think that's a, a I think that's a good thing. Way better than a pitch clock. I think, I think a pitch clock is, I mean, fine. Have a pitch clock. Most everybody, um, I, I believe that most everybody is is within the pitch clock for the most for the most part anyway, um, and I, I really think that. Yeah, that's not what's slowing games down. I believe it's I believe it's the parade of relief pitchers first and foremost, and maybe second and second most. First and foremost is 
guys are striking out and and walk and and pitchers aren't throwing the ball over the plate for, you know like like they used to and so you're just getting more pitches you know i mean you're getting more yeah uh way way more pitches in, in a ball game and that's slowing the game down followed then by the number of relievers no doubt about it hey we want to thank tony hoagland your state farm agent champlin h-o-a-g-l-u-n-d uh, he also provides financial services. He handles my insurance. He handles uh, Michael Russo's insurance as well. Hey, Minnesota sports fans. This is your local State Farm agent, Tony Hoagland. I need you all to ask yourselves this question. If you're in an at-fault car accident and you are sued for $700,000, how much of that $700,000 will my current insurance company pay? If you are unsure or can't answer all 700000 you need to give us a call. State Farm has been number one in car insurance since World War II and number one in homeowners insurance since 1964. For a no-obligation review of your current policies, call us at 763-421-4900 or check out our website at www.champlininsurance.com. All right, you have any other questions for me uh, on my last full day in Fort Myers? Well, one of the things that it, it, are there? Any, uh, tell me about the other rule changes because one of the ones that that popped into my mind here that I've heard uh, bandied about a bit is um, you go into extra innings at some point, some some extra inning, and you start with a runner on second base. Uh, you know, to shorten up uh, the, you know the, those those games, and I haven't thought about it an awful lot, um, and maybe don't even need to think about it because maybe that's just you know I haven't it's seen that thrown one. out there. Yeah, because I, because I, I hate that idea. My first pass, I yeah. I hate that idea. But what what else is what else is happening? Uh, so for two thousand nineteen twenty, they're going they're gonna to bring they're going to have just one trade deadline with. So you're not going to have the silliness of the waiver trade deadline after the real trade trade deadline. It'll just be one solid trade deadline, which probably create more urgency and could be interesting. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Uh, mound visits starting 2020 will be reduced from six to five during games, which I like. Um, mm-hmm. There will be an all-star election day. So fans will determine the starting. So I think what they're going to do is have people vote all summer, but then they will determine the starters and have like the final round of decisions in like one 24 hour period. Again, just to kind of heighten expectations or heighten excitement for that day. The home run derby will pay $1 million to the winning player. Commercial breaks are going to be shortened by 20 seconds to two minutes. Uh, position players will be prohibited from pitching in games that don't go into extra innings unless the team is ahead or behind by at least eight runs. I don't know how, many, how big a deal that's going to be. And they're, they're going to appoint a bunch of committees over you know, trying to modernize the game, uh, find ways for the players and the uh, owners to work well together. Uh, and they're going to go back to a 15-day disabled list from 10. Uh, the last thing is beginning 2020, all teams will have a 28-man roster in the final month of September after having a 26-man roster the first five months of the season. And what were they able to be able, able to expand to in September before? Uh, pretty much unlimited. Yeah. It was really you could bring up as right. many players. Right, so it's going to be so it's going to be 28, 28 only, right? Yeah, and so uh, they're expanding to a 26-man roster. Yeah. Uh, with a, a limit tw- of. 12 pitchers, so there'll be a lot more position players, which I think is a good thing. And then in September, you can basically add two more players. So it, the good thing is, is it's going to formalize it. You're not going to have some teams playing with 25 and other teams playing with 40. Right. Right. No, that's a good, that is, that's a good rule um, it, it, it change as well, I think. So, you know, the big one is, is trying to figure out a way to maintain the, you know, the beauty of what the game is and, and get it sped up just a little bit. Um, you know, for the for the fans, because I, I think we all think that's important. And uh, like I said, that that you can you can attack the number of mound visits and relief pitcher uh, changes. Um, it's it's really hard to it, it's hard it, it's going to be next to impossible unless something drastic happens fairly quickly for us to see fewer walks and strikeouts, and consequently the game's going to be a bit slower because there just aren't enough of La Tortugas uh, out there to, uh, <laughs> to uh, put the put the doggone thing in play early. Oh, well, you know, maybe that's how they should, what Major League Baseball should do. They should have a rule that wins Asadio should be on a Major League roster at all times from now until he turns forty. <laughs> maybe he could be the. Maybe they could make a rule that uh, one player every year can play for every team, and so he just goes around. And uh, gets in the lineup for everybody for one series or something like that. That'd be pretty fun. Just make it the La Tortuga rule. 
Hey, love hey, it. we had a Twitter, we had a Twitter uh, uh, question. One of our uh, one of our great listeners. I just happened to think of this. Uh, 